this is it. This is release week for the Ubuntu 1804 releases. Uh, so many flavors of Ubuntu that to review them all in a timely fashion, I'm going to go ahead and get started a couple of days early taking a look at the 1804 releases. Today I'm going to take a look at Ubuntu Budgie 1804 Bionic Beaver. So, the official release dates for the 1804 releases is actually two days from now, but nothing is going to change in the next two days. Uh, everything is frozen. So, this is essentially going to be what you get in two days with Ubuntu Budgie 1804. Why am I taking a look at Budgie uh, as the first flavor of Ubuntu 1804 to review on this channel? It's because it's the flavor of Ubuntu that I genuinely interested in the most. I actually really love the Budgie desktop. I run Solus Budgie on my laptop back here. I've reviewed Ubuntu Budgie 1710 when it released uh, last October, and I really was impressed with Ubuntu Budgie, so I'm looking forward to this one. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this in a VM on the Ubuntu Budgie website, which is ubuntubudgie.org. They do have the 1804 release notes uh, up already, even though it's a couple of days early here. Uh, some new features and enhancements. Uh, let's see, they're adding support for open VNC connections via the Network Manager applet. Better font handling. They add color emoji support for the GNOME characters. Uh, better key shortcuts. Okay, that's interesting. Like, uh, just looking at some of the sh shortcuts they've added. Super D now toggles the desktop. Okay. Uh, default budgie applets. They now have the quick note applet. The drop by applet. Let's see, showtime, desktop desktop clock with customizable colors, and some other neat stuff. A lot of improvements in the uh, budgie desktop environment. Anyway, I'm going to link to the release notes in the description for those of you interested in that. And I'm going to go ahead and get the install started here. Okay, so today I'm going to be installing this inside a VM. I'm using VirtualBox. I gave this virtual machine, one core of my six core CPU, and I gave this virtual machine two gigs of RAM. So, should be plenty of resources for the Budgie desktop. The Budgie desktop is not a system resource hog the way GNOME 3 can be. Budgie seems to be kind of lightish. Uh, I find it similar to something like Mate. Anyway... What are we doing here? Did we? I guess we went straight into the live environment. Uh, you know what? I, I probably didn't choose the correct thing when the that greeter screen came up. I wanted to run through the install. I really don't want to play around in the live environment. So let's see. Install now. This should launch the standard Ubiquity installer, standard installer in Ubuntu. Oh, the dock is kind of in the way. Let's see if I can make the screen a little bigger. Not sure if the VirtualBox guest editions work out of the box here on the live ISO. They usually do in Ubuntu. All right. Yeah, now I've got a little more room to work with. English has been chosen as our language. I'm going to click continue. All right, English US has been chosen for our keyboard layout. We have a test field that we can type in. Everything seems to be functioning correctly. I'm going to click continue. All right, updates and other software. What apps would you like to install to start with? Do we want the normal installation? That's what I'm going to go with. They also offer a minimal installation. It's a little lighter. Uh, a few programs are not installed uh, on the minimal installation that are installed in the normal installation. I'm just going to go with a normal install though. Download updates while installing Budgie. Uh, that's already ticked on. Install third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi, media formats. This installs all your proprietary uh, video drivers, Wi-Fi drivers, your uh, multimedia codecs. You do need to tick this on uh, to get a proper desktop experience. You really are going to want the proprietary graphics drivers and all your multimedia codecs. If you don't install that, your Linux experience is going to be a little dimmer. All right, and I click continue. All right, installation type. Erase disk and install Budgie is 
ticked on by default. This basically is going to let Budgie uh, have the entire 15 gig hard drive of this virtual machine I created. That's what I'm going to do. You could, you could also go to, down at the bottom here and choose something else if you wanted to manually set up your partitions. I'm going to click install now. It's going to warn me. It's about to format the drive and write to the disk. I'm going to click continue. All right. Time zone. It has correctly chosen the central time zone in the U.S. for me. I'm going to click continue. And we wait a second. Did I not click continue? I thought I did. Click it again. Yeah, I may have not clicked it the first time. All right, we need to create our username. I'm going to create the username DT. And then we need to give our user a strong and complicated password. All right, log in automatically. I never like ticking that on. I like it being asked for a password to log into my computer for privacy reasons. Uh, require my password to log in is ticked on by default. I'm going to click continue. And that is it. The installation now begins. It usually takes somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes for this next portion of the install to complete. So I'm going to pause the video. I'll be back once the installation is completed. Okay, the installation has completed. That took uh, maybe 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, it was a very quick installation. Um, once the installer finishes, it gives you this screen here. We can click Continue Testing, and we'll still be able to play around in the live environment. But what you really need to do is click Restart Now and Reboot Your Machine to finish the install. That's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so I've re rebooted the virtual machine here. And we wait for our freshly installed Ubuntu Budgie 18.04 to boot up. Okay, and let me type in my password. <clears throat> it takes a second for the Budgie desktop environment to load. This is the very first time we're, we're logging in. Sometimes the very first time you log in to a new install, it takes a little longer than usual. All right, so this is the budgie desktop and what a gorgeous desktop is I mean first impressions or everything this is a very very beautiful desktop environment uh, budgie in particular is a very attractive desktop environment but the desktop on a boon to budgie is just gorgeous love the wallpaper love uh, the little conky clock I'm assuming this is conky on the wallpaper here uh, of course uh, we have the budgie panel at the top we have a plank dock here at the left hand side which I really like. Let's go through the programs installed by default on Ubuntu Budgie 1804. All right, under accessories, we have caffeine. We have the caffeine indicator. Is it already turned on? Let me launch it. Yeah, it was already up here. We already had caffeine. If I click about, yeah, caffeine 2.9.4. It manually controls the desktop's idle state. I don't really need to different instances of caffeine running. Let me quit one of them. If I can. Uh, I probably shouldn't have launched caffeine since it was already started. Anyway, back to accessories. We have our calculator. We have files, which is, is that the Nautilus file manager they're using? Probably the standard file manager in the GNOME desktop environment. Uh, updated software has been issued since Ubuntu 18.04 has been released. Let's see the details of the update. Uh, it looks like we have a Linux kernel version specific, so it's going to update to kernel version 4.15. I'm not going to bother taking the update here on camera. Didn't look like it was a very big update. This ISO is maybe a, a day or two old, this uh, snapshot here. All right. Yeah, this is the Nautilus file manager, standard file manager in the GNOME desktop environment. They're going to use a lot of GNOME apps here in Budgie because Budgie is a fork of GNOME 3. Their text editor is gedit. Gedit is the standard text editor in the GNOME desktop environment. Really nice, plain text editor. Also under accessories, we have the GNOME maps. I don't know if having a, a map program is necessary on most Linux distros, but if you need a map program, the GNOME map tool here is actually a really, really cool tool. Um, 
I might have zoomed in a little too far there. I zoomed in somewhere in China. But anyway, GNOME Maps is a fantastic mapping utility. All right, we have Plank. Plank is our dock down here. I control and right click. You get some options here about about Plank. This is Plank 0.11.4. Plank. Stupidly simple. And then it has a link to the Plank website. Plank is a really nice, kind of minimal dock, uh, but very functional. We have GNOME Weather. And of course, you give it a location. Actually, a Looks like geolocation is turned on by default. It's already giving me uh, weather information from my local airport here. All right. Under games, we have Solitaire, Mahjong, Mines, and Sudoku. Under graphics, we have G Thumb Image Viewer. Not that familiar with G Thumb. Okay, that is the uh, pictures. Uh, it just says pictures. It's a GNOME app, <laughs> but GThumb is the actual name of it. For some reason, the GNOME people decided to rename all their uh, standard GNOME applications with these very generic, simple names. And it gets kind of confusing when you do that. Uh, LibreOffice Draw is also listed under graphics. Symbol Scan, a scanning utility, is also installed. Under Internet, Chromium is our default web browser. That's an interesting choice. And mainline Ubuntu Firefox is the default web browser. Uh, did I not launch Chromium? I thought I clicked on it. I may have not. No, I definitely clicked on it. Is Chromium not launching? Well, you know, this is still two days away from official release. So there may be some bugs. But Chromium is definitely not wanting to launch for me. I may have needed to take that system update. That could be causing some problems. Oh well. I'm going to continue on. Uh, this, if that is the only problem here, fine. If I get some more issues here with programs not wanting to open up, I may go ahead and update the system. Geary is our email client. Uh, Transmission is our BitTorrent client. Uh, See if Geary will launch for me. Yep, Geary launched for me, no problem. Okay. So instead of uh, Firefox and Thunderbird for a browser and email, they're doing um, Chromium and Geary. Uh, oh, Chromium finally launched. Wow. That is crazy that Chromium finally launched for me here. I wonder if the other two or three instances of Chromium that I tried to launch will eventually launch too. Anyway, now that it's launched, let me see if I can figure out what version of Chromium we're using here. Okay, this is Chromium version 65.0, and yeah, I had about four instances four instances of Chromium try to launch. <laughs> so it did. Uh, it was very slow in launching, but I probably made it worse by clicking on it, you know, three or four times. Uh, but that is strange that Chromium takes that long to open up anyway. Again, I didn't give this VM that much as far as system resources. One core of my six core CPU, two gigs of RAM, but that still seemed very slow for uh, Chromium booting up there, launching. Uh, under Office, we have our calendar, and then we have the LibreOffice utilities. We have Calc, Draw, Impress, and Writer all installed. Let's open up LibreOffice. This is the writing program. Basically, it's a word processor. It's our free and open source alternative to Microsoft Word. And they're using LibreOffice version 6.0.3.2. So, pretty recent release of LibreOffice. Under sound and video, we have Cheese. Cheese is a webcam app. We have GNOME MPV for playing video. Of course, you could play audio too. It's a multimedia player, but most people would use it to play video. And we have Rhythmbox. Rhythmbox is the standard uh, audio player, music player in the GNOME desktop environment. Rhythmbox is a fantastic audio player. All right. And under System Tools, okay, we have the Budgie applets. I guess this is where we uh, can configure some applets in the panel. Let's see. Yeah. We have uh, Budgie Welcome, I guess is the name of the program. And then... 
We already have the auto keyboard switcher applet up here. We can install the brightness applet if I was on a laptop. Uh, calendar applet's already installed. That's this one here in the center. Clockworks applet. That's interesting. Display time across multiple time zones. Uh, it's not installed. Uh, but we could install it. Just one click and it would install that applet. You know what? Let's give it a try. That actually looks like a pretty interesting applet. Let's see how long this takes. We have a variety of applets though. Countdown applet, the drop by applet. The drop by applet's already up here. Let's see what the drop by applet is. See if I can figure out which one it is. Of course we got weather. This one here is welcome to quick notes. It's our ethernet. Well, it says the drop by. Oh, it, it only pops up when a USB device is connected. So if I plugged in like an external USB drive, then the drop by applet would appear. All right. Now I have a notification here. One unread notification. Notification, welcome app, completed installation of Clockworks applet. Okay. So, how do I use the Clockworks applet? Where did it actually put that applet? I don't see it up here. I am not exactly sure how that worked. But it says I've installed it because now instead of an install, I have a remove icon. Anyway, I'm not exactly sure why the Clockworks applet, it, it doesn't appear on your panel by default. If I go to the side uh, menu here, the sidebar, the Raven sidebar is what they call this in the Budgie desktop environment. I go, I go down here and click on the little settings wheel and I go to top panel. For This is Budgie desktop settings. I'm going to configure the top panel and this is where we can add applets. I click the plus symbol here and I don't see Clockworks anywhere. I see the standard clock applet, which is right here, but I don't see one called Clockworks, which is what we just installed. So that may have not worked correctly. I'm not sure. Let me see if I can install another one just to test it out. Uh, let's see. I don't want to do a global menu. Uh, I'm looking through here. Oh, a screenshot applet. That would be useful. For somebody like me, I take a lot of screenshots. Um, and it's going to add a PPA, Ubuntu Budgie slash Backports. I'm going to go ahead and give it permission to add that PPA. And it's applying changes. I will say this is a really neat setup here, how they have this add and remove applet, install, remove applet. And they have a ton of applets available for the the uh, budgie panel here. So I really think this is pretty cool. If I could figure a way to uh, actually add these things though. I would assume that when you install them it would automatically uh, add them to the panel. Maybe not. I probably do need to go to the uh, budgie settings program here. Go to top panel then click add applet once it finishes adding it or installing it here. Still waiting for the screenshot applet to install here. I'm going to pause the video for a second. This might take a few minutes to install. Yeah, I've waited about two minutes here. You know what? I'm just going to minimize this. I'm going to let the install of that applet continue, but let me go finish getting through the rest of this menu here. All right. So under system tools, of course we have budgie applets, which is what we just launched budgie desktop settings, which is this program here, which I was trying to add an applet right here. Top panel, add applet. I got a notification a second ago that that applet finished installing. So I should see a screenshot applet somewhere in this list. But I don't, I don't see either one of the applets that I installed in this list. So I'm not sure how I add these new applets. I'm really not. So 
I don't know. I'll have to uh, look into that a little more. I'm not not sure what's going on there. Uh, I'm able to take a look at all the applets that are installed by default in the uh, budgie settings, but for some reason I don't see those new applets. Let me go ahead and close this program. Yeah, it definitely installed, so... Hmm. That's unfortunate. I really wanted to play around with some of the the applets. We have budgie themes here. Let's see what kind of theming options we have. Alright, looks like some of the theming is Pasillo, Arc Design. Let's try Arc Design. That just uh, shows us a screenshot, but we need to click Apply Theme here to actually set the theme. Give it a second. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like that a little bit better than having that transparent uh, bar at the top. I, I like a solid color panels and solid color docs. Uh, we have Adapta, we have Vimix, Evo Pop, Ant, and Pop. So we have a, a few different choices for theming. Let me try the Evo Pop theme. Oh, that one I actually had to install, so that one may take a minute. I probably should have paid attention. So the only themes that were actually installed by default that we can choose from are Post Pasillo and Arc. I'm just going to go with the Arc theme for now. I'm going to minimize this program. I'm going to let it continue to install the Evo Pop theme since I had already begun that. Also under System Tools, we have Budgie Welcome, which is the greeter here. This was the greeter we got when we uh, first loaded up the live environment. And it has links to introduction, features, getting started, recommendations, online store, community, get involved, and donate. And then, of course, install software and default settings. If I click install software, it's going to ask us what software? Budgie applets? Do we want to launch the software center? Do we want to do snap apps? Do we want to do flat pack apps? Let's check out the software center. All right. Welcome to Software. So this is GNOME Software. It's basically the GNOME Software Center. You can search with categories. For example, audio, video. I click on it and it should give me a list of some of the top rated audio and video programs that are in the repos. Things like VLC, Audacious, Clementine, SM Player, what have you. Uh, if I go back, it does give me the option to actually search with a search bar. For example, say I didn't want to use Chromium for my web browser. And I wanted to use Firefox. I just do a search for Firefox. Okay, and Firefox is returned. If I click on it, then I get a little bit more information about it, and I get this button, Install. I click Install. It asks for a root password. You know what, I'm not going to bother installing it, but I type in my password, and it begins installing Firefox. So that is your GUI package manager here in Ubuntu Budgie 18.04. All right. We also have uh, under system tools, well, the software center, which we've already taken a look at. Under administration, we have our login window. We have the software updater. This is your standard software updater utility in Ubuntu, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's checking for updates. Let that run. Also under administration, we have our users. Under preferences, we have about background. Oh, let's change the background. Let's see what kind of wallpapers are installed by default here in Ubuntu Budgie 1804. All right, if I click on background here to change the background, we also have the option of changing the lock screen. Let's see what kind of wallpaper pack was installed. Okay, these are some really nice wallpapers. Actually, some really gorgeous wallpapers. I really like black and white photos, so let's check out the black and white one here. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I could dig that. Um, here's a kind of a pixelated version of that default wallpaper we had on earlier. I'm going to decline taking the update. Yeah, that's pretty cool, too. I like that. If I right click on the desktop and click change background, it takes me to the same program. I'm going to go back to background. 
Let's see. Some of the nature photos here look pretty nice. Actually, here's another black and white one. Yeah, I like that. That looks pretty classy there. Back to the menu system under administration, actually under preferences, we have options to change uh, settings for Bluetooth, color, date and time, display, keyboard, mouse, network, online accounts, privacy. Uh, we have, of course, our settings manager, which is the program we had were just in. We were on the background tab, but you could go to notifications, search, region and language, you know, to change preferences for whatever. In the top panel. Let's take a look at the applets that are installed by default. Even though I couldn't get those applets uh, that I wanted to add, you know, let me go back to the settings, make sure I still can add them. So if I go to add applets, you know what Clockworks now shows. So it just took a second. I'm not sure why, but that Clockworks applet is here now. If I add it, there it is. Okay. So I guess it just takes a couple of minutes after install for for those applets to show up here in the budgie desktop settings. What was the other one I installed? I forget. It's going to be a new applet. I think it was the uh, screenshot utility. The screenshot widget. Let me add that. And that will take a screenshot. Yep. And it asks you, do you want to take a screenshot of the full screen? A screenshot of, guess, of the currently active window, which would be budgie desktop settings. Or do we want to d select a, a portion of the screen to take a screenshot of? So that's pretty cool. All right, the applets that were installed by default, of course, were the clock applet. We also have our network, quick note, nightlight, places, notifications, of course, sound. We have our power or our session settings where we can lock, suspend, hibernate, restart, and shut down. And then, of course, the very last icon here is the Raven sidebar. And if I right click on the desktop, one thing I noticed is one of the options is open Tilex here. Tilex is a terminal. Uh, they're not using the standard uh, GNOME terminal. They're using something called Tilex. That's pretty cool. Uh, first of all, let me CD into the home directory. And let's do a quick uname dash R. Kernel version. Kernel version 4.15.0. Okay. Very recent kernel version. So what are my thoughts on Ubuntu Budgie 18.04, Bionic Beaver? Love it. I love 17.10 when I reviewed it. I love Ubuntu Budgie 18.04. I mean, this is just a gorgeous desktop. I love the Budgie desktop environment. It makes sense. It's got sane uh, layouts, sane defaults. Uh, the suite of apps that are installed in Ubuntu Budgie makes sense. I mean, it's got a full suite of apps. Uh, most of them I, I wouldn't change. I would I would run with what is installed by default. I like the plank dock. I like where it's placed on the left hand side. Beautiful theming, beautiful wallpapers. Uh, if you don't like the theming, they had a very easy to use uh, application to install extra themes. They had a very easy to use application to install more panel applets. Everything about Ubuntu Budgie 1804 is really first class. I mean, this is a polished professional product. The install, of course, is your standard Ubuntu install, the Ubiquiti installer. Uh, you click OK three or four times and in 15 minutes or less, you're done. So 18.04 Bionic Beaver Ubuntu Budgie A+. Before I go, I do want to give a quick shout out. Special thanks to all my patrons, all my Patreon supporters, A.K. Ron, Mr. Neely Pops, John, Ryan, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Matt, Darkwin, Mark, Christian, Jake, Benjamin, Stephen, Marcus, Interceptor, and Bob. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.